Hello and welcome back to Tasha Could Make That. Today I'm sewing my birthday dress from a vintage sewing pattern from the 1950s. I'm posting on a random Monday because by the time you see this, it'll be my birthday. So happy birthday to me! This year marks a decade that I've been sewing a dress for my birthday every year. It's not always something I wear on my actual birthday, in part because I have an early April birthday and I love sleeveless dresses, but I love sewing a dress to mark the occasion. This year I'll be using Advanced 7131, a mid-1950s sleeveless dress pattern with an interesting construction and cool neckline. I've made this pattern twice before in very different fabrics. Once in a plaid silk dupioni when I was blogging for Mood Fabric several years ago, and once in a red and cream vintage gingham cotton that I sewed shortly after that one, which is the one I'm wearing right now. I usually don't remember where I find my vintage sewing patterns, but for this one I do. I found it one year when we were staying in a cabin in northern Wisconsin and we went to an antique mall across the border in Minnesota. We've been there a couple of times and that is a good antique mall and it's where I found this sewing pattern. For my birthday dress this year, I'll be using vintage fabric. I'll be honest, it can be hard to cut into vintage fabric because you're cutting into the precious and you know, you might worry, what if I make a mistake and it's not good enough? But the fabric doesn't do you any good sitting in your sewing room, so I try not to have that feeling too often. So I'm busting out the good stuff. This is a gorgeous, vibrant, turquoise black, white, and gray cotton. I have four and a half yards of this, so there's plenty for this project and enough to make a full gathered skirt for it. It was a polished cotton, and thank you to Decades of Style for reminding me for this term when I couldn't conjure it from the recesses of my brain. I think that was often meant for draperies, so it was really meant to be dry cleaned, and it kind of kept the stiff, somewhat shiny appearance of the fabric. But if you wash it, it basically turns back into a normal cotton, so if it's the right weight, you can use it for garments. So that's what this fabric was. It was a polished cotton, and I washed it, and now it's the perfect weight to make a dress. So let's get to it and sew my birthday dress. Off to the fabric cutting first. Like I said, this fabric is cotton, but I think since it started life as a polished cotton, it was a lot more drapey than what I usually work with and was kind of shifty and annoying to cut out. Since it was a busy print with those weird kind of irregular diagonal lines, I could probably have skipped pattern matching the center back seam, but if you followed me on my blog or social media for any length of time, or indeed watched either of my first two dress sewing videos, you'll know I can't resist matching the print across a center back zipper, so I did that for this dress too. In terms of cutting out the skirt, I had to make a judgment call because I actually could conceivably have a lot of fabric left over. I had to decide if I wanted a much fuller skirt cut on the cross grain, leaving a random one foot section about two yards long, or if I wanted a slightly less full skirt cut on the grain, leaving me nearly two whole yards after. In the end, I went with that since I figured I could really do something else with that fabric another time. Maybe a bolero or something. I wasn't feeling a match set right now, but who knows, maybe I'll revisit that in the future. This dress pattern had facings for the armholes, but the first time I sewed it, I cut the seam allowances back to a quarter inch and used bias tape instead, so I cut bias tape for this too. After everything was cut, I had to decide how I was going to interface the neckband. I keep a sewing notebook, but neither of my past versions mentioned if I interfaced the outer piece, the inner piece, or both pieces, or no pieces. I mean, I knew I probably interfaced at least one of them, but the pattern didn't actually mention interfacing, and I didn't take any notes. So I tried to assess one of the previous versions, kind of squeezing it between my fingers, and ultimately decided I probably interfaced the outer pieces, but not the inner pieces, so that's what I did for this one too. After interfacing the neck bands, I pinned both the front and back bands together at the shoulder seams for both the outer neck band and facing. And then I pinned the dark tucks. They're kind of fussy, but what I sometimes do is use a pin through one end into the other for all the markings, and then fold along the pins. It mostly works out well, but then right before I sewed it, I checked the placement by sticking a pin through, and the fabric was pretty shifty, so I had to adjust a couple of them. I also pinned on the pocket pieces, which I cut out of a random black fabric, and then I could sew the dart tucks, the neckband shoulder seams, and attach the pockets. And yes, I have a little post-it note that says half inch seam allowance on it at the half inch seam allowance line, just as a reminder, since I'm so used to sewing with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, I didn't want to blow right past it. At this point, I made the bias tape for the armholes. I use a bias tape maker, which is usually a breeze, but this fabric was not playing nice here. 
So I had to bust out some starch spray in order to get it to keep the folds. I just have a crappy old vintage tea towel under it so I don't get my ironing board all gross and full of starch gunk. <laughs> I'm usually fairly good about being orderly in my sewing, but it just wasn't happening with my birthday dress. So after the bias tape, I went back to press all the things I'd just sewed previously, including the dart tucks, which I'll be revisiting later since here I pressed them all to the center instead of pressing them open into an inverted pleat like they're supposed to be. Oops. Then I had to pin the neckbands together at the upper seam and pin the side seams of the bodice together. I sew a lot of dresses with pretty straightforward bodices, so this pattern is one where I was actually referring to the pattern regularly. I did modify the construction of the center back zipper a bit, and like I said, I swapped the armhole facings to bias tape, but otherwise stuck mainly to the pattern. Then on to sewing and pressing the neckband seam and bodice side seams. I also finished the raw edges of the side seams with my serger. And then it was time to grade the neckband seam allowances before understitching it which I didn't do for a while since I wanted to get the bias tape all around the armholes first so I could sit down at the machine and do all of that at the same time. You can see I had wrapped the bias tape around a stack of post-it notes to keep it tidy until I needed it. I was not having those folded in edges get squirrely on me with this shifty fabric. Then I just had to apply the bias tape to the armhole starting with the right sides together. And here's what the bodice looked like before I sewed on the bias tape. I think it's neat that this pattern has the armholes open when you apply the facings, or in my case, the bias tape. It's a really interesting construction. Then the last thing before hitting the sewing machine again was pinning the side seams of the skirt. Then I could sew the bias tape on both armholes, sew the skirt side seams, and understitch the neckband. And then I searched the raw edges of the side seams of the skirt. I must admit, I'm not really terribly fussy about the serger, but I did happen to see I was a little wonky with my stitches on one edge of one of the pockets, which you can see since I was using white thread, so I just went over that little section the second time. So at this point I was about to press all those seams, but realized I hadn't added fusible stay tape to the center back of the skirt pieces for the zipper, so I did that first. I always use this in the bodice and skirt to interface the zipper. I always do the bodice ones really, really early on, and usually the skirt later. I Usually by now, but I had forgotten to, so I was doing it now. So pressing the neckband next, including turning out the points at the center back for the way I do a lap zipper. And then I was able to press the bias tape, which given how I've mentioned this fabric is shifty about three or four times at least, you can probably imagine how annoying this part was and how long it actually took. As I was going, I was pinning it in place to sew shut. In a few spots, the folded in edges of the bias tape rebelled, so here's a little tip I have to kind of corral things like that. I press using my tailor's ham and use pins straight into the ham and press between. If it's really bad, I use glass head pins because you can press right on top of those, but I didn't need to here. Then I gathered the skirt, running two lines of basting stitches, one inside and one outside the seam allowance. I frankly have no idea why I did that next instead of pressing the side seams of the skirt. I told you I was a little out of sorts in terms of my construction order, but I pressed the side seams after this. So this was a funny part. I had one of my past versions of this dress next to me to consult it, and it dawned on me that the waist tucks were supposed to be pressed open, kind of like an inverted box pleat, and not pressed to the center like a normal dart, which is what I was doing on this version. So I just had to remove the basting stitches and repress. If I'm sewing something that I've sewed in the past, I often have that item on my sewing table as I work on the new one to refer back to it, and it came in handy multiple times in this project. Alrighty, back at that bias tape. On my plaid silk version of this dress, I sewed this down by hand, but on my red checked one I edge stitched it, and that's what I did for this one too. And then gave the armholes a good press. Happily, the bias tape, even after all that fuss, looked really nice. Then I ran two rows of basting stitches on the upper edge of the bodice to gather it, in preparation to attach the neckband. And then to make it easier to turn in the lower edge of the facing side of the neckband, I ran a line of basting stitches to press along that seam line. It's a lot easier than trying to measure this up by hand along a curve. So then I pinned the lower edge of the outer piece of the neckband unit to the bodice front and back. You leave the shoulders free since the neckband forms the straps, so I just had to match up the markings on the neckband with the edges of the bias tape. I took a lot of time doing this because the neckband is gathered, and I wanted it to all look nice after I sewed it. But you'll soon see, it didn't really matter because... So I did all that, but in the end, I decided that the gathering, it kind of looked like shit. 
<laughs> so I unpicked it all and I'm gonna have to do it again. Second time's a charm though. So after regathering the bodice front and back and sewing the neckband on again, I was happy with it. So on to pressing it and grading the seam allowance. Whew. One little tip as I began pressing up the seam allowances for the shoulders on the lower edge of the neckband. I don't do this every time, but when I want to help cut bulk out of seam intersections, I also trim out the extra seam allowances. So it might seem like I'd be sewing shut the neckband next, but I need to put the zipper in first, so I have to put the bodice aside for a while and gather my skirt and sew the waistband seam. I try to remember to use my walking foot for gathered waistband seams because it helps reduce the chances that the waistband will stretch when you sew it. Highly recommend it. And after I sew the waistband seam, I serge the raw edges together for the waistband. It's so satisfying watching all that bulk from the waistband fall off the serger as it cuts it. <laughs> Almost ready for the zipper, just need to sew the center back skirt seam below the end of the zipper and finish the raw edges. It's zipper time. I didn't have an 18 inch black zipper, so I just cut one down to the right length. You just sew a zipper stop by hand with a doubled thread. I use some fray check or another seam sealer on both sides to secure it. Then it's off to pin the underlapped side of the lapped zipper, which is the right side of the bodice back, and then sew that on with my zipper foot. And then on to pinning the lapped left side of the bodice back with my handy quilter's ruler inside as always, so I don't pin through to the front of the dress. This is always one of my favorite parts, but also a bit nerve wracking because if I've matched the print across the center back zipper, I have to be really careful about getting this right. But I also get to start seeing that print matching coming together here, which is really satisfying. Back to the walking foot to top stitch the lap zipper on the sewing machine. And then the moment of truth, if I nailed the print matching, and yes, I did. Admittedly, I could probably not have bothered on this bodice since this print is so busy, but hey, I know I did it, you know I did it, so there we go. Now this is normally the part in a more straightforward bodice where all I'd have to do is hand sew shut the neckline facings at the center back along the zipper tape, but in this case I actually now have to sew shut the neckband since the inside of that forms the facing. This took for frickin' effort to pin exactly because I wanted to top stitch it from the front side so I had to be super precise and make sure that I didn't accidentally make the facings too narrow so the top stitching wouldn't catch it, which it totally did not, even with all that effort. So I had to unpick both shoulders after I did this and do those areas again. But all good after I fixed those two sections. So just a good press left for the neckband and then onto the hem. I just did a simple turned up hem that I sewed by hand. Kind of my usual for gathered skirts. I do hate hemming, but you know, necessary evil. Then I just had the belt left to make, and you're not seeing that here because I'm working on my belt making tutorial, which you'll see in a couple of weeks. I did opt to top stitch this one, which I rarely do, but with the top stitching on the neckband, I thought it would tie together nicely. I'm not gonna lie, this was a bit of an arduous dress to sew, but wow was it worth it. The neckband was so fussy and the cotton was difficult to work with, but it definitely came together in the end. The neckband is still a tiny bit uneven in some of the places, but not enough to bother me, especially in such a busy print. And this vintage print is amazing. I can't wait to wear this dress. It was absolutely worth busting out the good fabric for this. I do think for all its trouble, this is a really great bodice, but I am in no hurry to sew this anytime again soon. Hope you enjoyed watching me sew this year's birthday dress. This marks another trip around the sun for me, and I'm happy to be sharing my crafty adventures here with you. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time soon. Bye.